last class we talked about uh, manual transmission and we didn't finish it right we see the video then we are uh, showing you the slide so let's go back to the slide okay uh, where we left it then we'll today we'll then we'll study uh, automatic transmission and we'll see a video then we'll go through the uh, slide so let me share the screen. You can see the slide, right? Okay. I think that we almost, we already finished this slide, right? Yes, sir, we finished. Okay. Yeah, this slide is showing that how you uh, send the gear say from gear two to gear three or gear four. So uh, who can explain me a little bit uh, this figure? Anyone can explain me? Okay, let's see. Khalil, roll uh, 99, you are here? Roll 99. Hello. Mr. Khalil. He just logged in and he left us. Okay. Uh, he think that Sarf can never see me. Right. So Khalil left. Okay. Let's say Abhi, I'm the one. You hear? Abhi? Assalamu alaikum, sir. Yes, I'm here. You hear? Okay. So you are in the last class? No, sir. I missed the last class. You missed the last class. You you missed it? Yes, sir. Oh. Okay, I'll take the your attendance. Okay, you missed the last class. I'm writing down. And let's see then who can talk. I ask. Ipti, 133, you are here? Ipti, you are not here. So his attendance is gone. Then uh, 149, Tamjit, 149, Tamjit, he is not here. Okay, let's see how many people is here. Uh, Akib Ahmed, 126. Yes, sir. Here. Okay, good. Yes, sir. Uh, tell me, describe this figure you see in the in the screen. What is this but one? This, sir, this, uh, which one, sir? Did you see the figure in the slide? Yes, sir. Okay, describe this one. So this is a manual gearbox from an automobile. Okay, manual gearbox from automobile. An automobile. Okay, how many shafts is there? So there are total uh, three shafts. Three shaft. Okay. So what is this shaft? This shaft is uh, comes from the engine. Engine or flywheel. Is that yes, sir. Flywheel connected input to flywheel. Shaft. Input shaft. Right? Yes, sir. What is the name of this shaft? So layer shaft. Uh, what do you say? The bottom one. What's the name of the shaft? Layer shaft. Layer shaft, sir. Anyone? They say lay shaft in the figure, but yes, sir. Counter shaft. Counter shaft. Yes, Counter -shaft. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. And what is this shaft? This shaft. Output shaft. Output yes, shaft. Sir. Output shaft. And all the gear you see, the green gear, and this one is constantly machine, right? Yes, sir. This is my all always angus together. And the blue gear they run freely or they are locked. So the blue gear is connected to the uh, output shaft. But is uh, always connected or is not always in the not key? always. Not always, sir. Not always. So the all port. of them all of them is actually is free to run, right? Yes. Yes. They sir. are free to run. But they are rotating constantly with the uh, no orange color gear, 
right? Yes, sir. So only <clears throat> you will get the output as far which are you locked with the output shaft. Say you like to lock uh, gear four with the output shaft. Then whatever the speed of the gear four, output shaft will be rotated with the same speed. Right. Now how it done? So say you are running gear four is the high gear. One and two is the required when you're running slowly. So for the high gear, you cannot, you start the vehicle, you cannot immediately go to the gear four. At first you have to go slowly. So you say you are gear one. So you are over here. You have to move to a lever over here. Then you have to go to the this center. That means in between gear four and three. That means with this lever, we have to we decide that you will select this one or this one or this one. This is three, right? And you see how many slot over here? Three slot actually, one, two, three. You have three slot, but the, you can engage with six gear. So same thing over here. Each slot engage with like R and five, then three, four, then one and two. So with this lever, at first you choose, for example, the middle one between three and four. So you have one movement. You stick the lever, then coming over here. This is one segment or movement. Then if you go to the gear three, then you have to move to lever along between this slot. That means then first you select this, this one, then this one you move over here. This one you move over here. This is schematic view. This is an original view. This one would lock the shaft to lock with this one. And this one, the orange one, no, the pink color one will lock with this gear. So this way, uh, gear changing mechanism happen. So this part is include a slip and a synchronizer. Uh, we might show you a, uh, another video that how it works, then it will be more clear. But you just remember, all gear is running freely on the output shaft, but which one you like to lock is locked by synchronizer and synchronizer slip, okay? By selecting, at first you select the gear slot, then you move the your synchronizer slip to lock it to the output shaft. Okay, then see what we have in the next slide. This is the same thing we are showing over here. Now, gear shift lever, normally if you travel in the bus, you see shift lever even be just left side of the driver on the attached to the floor of the vehicle, right? So, <clears throat> in some case, you might see it is on the, by the instrument panel. I think uh, Toyota Ram, then, Toyota Wish, uh, I drove a vehicle, Toyota Sienna, that on gear, the, those, that one was automatic transmission, but gear slot lever on the dashboard, okay, the left side. But most of this is located on the floor, like Toyota Corolla or Premio. Gear transmission, gearbox, uh, half immersed in the lubricant, because why you need lubricant? So all the gear is meshing together constantly, so due to the frictional contact, there will be some generation of heat. So you need to use some lubricant, okay? And normally those lubricant is, uh, we use ACE 75W90, and then ACE 140, ACE 175. So Society of Automotive Engineers did uh, make some criteria, 75W90. So this one might, uh, you learn about it in the part, part A. So this one, how does it look like? That means 75W means this is good in temperature between 75 to 90, okay, something like that. For example, if you live in very cold area of the world, in the winter, your temperature might be going minus say four. In the summer, 90, so, or say 80. So you need to use a lubricant that should not freeze 
at low temperature. It should not be solid. Okay. Again, at high temperature, it should not be that much thinner. Okay. But in our country, like what happened? Winter and summer temperature, uh, not that much variation. Okay. So depending on your weather, you need to use uh, those lubricant to make reduce the wire in the gear tip of your trunk. And various switch is in and sensor installed in the transmission system. For example, if you put, put your vehicle in the reverse gear, your uh, backlight is uh, on, right? So it is done by backup light switch. The sensor automatically realizes that you put in the gear in the reverse direction, so it send the signal to the ECU and he turn the backlight. Then uh, speedometer. Obviously, you need to see what is the uh, speed of your vehicle. So there is some sensor in the shaft of the might be in the output shaft or differential gear. Then you get the another differential gear should be in the transmission. That means output shaft. Uh, mention about your output shaft. It signal send signal to the instrument panel and it show your uh, speed of your vehicle. Then uh, <clears throat> in the meter. Vehicle speed center uh, sensor install in the transmission transaxle and it sends signal to the ECM control module. Also, you need to, uh, the ECM, that means electronic control module, and there is some software in the electronic control module. It works like a computer. If you open a hood of a Toyota XGO or Primo after 2012 model or 8 model, you will see there is a seems like kind of laptop inside the inside the car. So a lot of sensor like electronic braking, fuel pump, everything is maintained by electric control module. Uh, for example, if you convert your vehicle to LPG and the octave, that means your vehicle have dual system. It can run with LPG, it can run with Octane gas. So in that case, you need to install some software and some switch. When you're running the vehicle with LPG, uh, then the ECM should know that the fuel is no more uh, octane. Now we're running with the LPG. So he'll adjust the sparking uh, of the sparking time of spark plug. Okay. <clears throat> so that one is very important. Why important? We discuss it a little bit later on. A neutral safety switch. What is a neutral safety switch? Uh, if you, your lever you put in uh, D or N, say you are in uh, in the traffic jam, you see you need to wait 10 minutes. So you might not be able to uh, run your vehicle, right? So you don't like to burn the fuel. So what you'll do, at the beginning, you might put your gear lever in end position. Okay, so you remove your feet from the accelerator, from the brake, you're relaxing, but you see that uh, the traffic is not, traffic jam still remain for 10 minutes, mind me. So you just turn off your engine. And after 10 minutes, you try to turn, uh, turn your, uh, start your vehicle, it will not start because your gear shift lever in either in N position, that means neutral position, or in D position. Because there is a some safety switch over there. Why safety switch? Say, for example, you put in neutral position, what does it mean? That means uh, if you start the engine, your vehicle, uh, there will be no power to the transmission. Only engine will be running. But your vehicle might be go forward or backward depending on the road condition if you are in a inclined hill right it may go down right so other thing if it is in the d position and you immediately start the vehicle then the car will start to move so you might have a accident so that's why they use uh, neutral safety switch in the transmission so uh, sometimes it happened to me too that i put in the neutral switch suddenly i turn off I see the jam is too much. Then I try to start it. I see it's not starting. Then suddenly I realize that I put lever in end position. So you need to put lever in P position, then you need to start the vehicle. 
uh, other thing that uh, it has a control transmission control spark switch tcs what is this one transmission control spark switch it say it regulate vacuum advance what is vacuum advance for example you are running vehicle at low speed due to the traffic so your piston is going to tdc to bdc slowly because your vehicle rpm is uh, low right say for example uh, when your cylinder piston reaches this distance, then you your spark plug is giving spark, right? So this much distance is getting time. Whatever time need to reach the piston to uh, close to the spark plug, then within th three or two milliseconds, uh, fuel has to burn in that case right but you are get out from the traffic now your piston is moving faster because you push the accelerator so fuel is not getting enough time to burn completely so in that case what what need to do you need to uh, burn the uh, your fuel little bit earlier so you have to put spark little bit earlier that means Instead of right over here, when piston DCS might be this distance, then there will be spark in the spark plug. So fuel will get enough time to burn. And this is happened by spark adjustment. And you'll study in a party, okay? So in the transmission control switch, they have a uh, TCS switch, okay? And it's regulated by vacuum advance. So sometime you might see that uh, you will not get that much speed or acceleration when you driving vehicle at a higher speed. So something might be wrong when your uh, transmission control spark switch. You might need to replace it. Any question? No question? No, sir. No question. Okay. I'm stopping that one, then we'll go something else. Let's see. For this young case, the a gear with you know gear uh, synchronizer and sleep, how it is work. So I'd like to show you a uh, video. So let me share the song. YouTube. So this is the helical gear. This is the helical gear. This one is the helical gear. So this is how many speed over here depends on which way you are moving your like you say this one actually whole thing is a synchronizer. This one is synchronizer slip. This one. Okay. And uh, this one is synchronizer. This one is called synchronizer. So if this whole thing, I mean, it's up, uh, with this rectangle you right now they are attached to the left side gear so it, your output shaft is going speed as per this gear but if the whole thing you move to the right side then you, your output shaft will get speed of this gear so now what is happening you see that all the gear has a, some extended portion in this small circular thing i'm showing over here and it has a, some frictional surface. Okay. Uh, so due to the frictional surface, and this is the synchronizer. Synchronizer ha has some friction surface, like a class action. So if that synchronizer, if you uh, move toward right direction, this direction, then due to the friction surface, it will immediately have the same speed of this gear okay then you move the this slip a slip has a some key if this slip will be over this day he will cover this portion and with this some um, key mechanism he is locked the uh, output shaft with that uh, 
synchronizer. So then output shaft will have the same speed of the synchronizer or same speed of the this gear. And also this one has some internal teeth. You see right over here, it has some internal teeth. Okay, so uh, that is, that's why they use the synchronizer because they make sure that there will be no gear clash. Before you mesh together, you need to make sure this one and this one has the same speed synchronizer. And that's why in manual transmission, when you change the gear one to four, immediately you are putting in four, immediately you need to push the accelerator. Otherwise, you will damage your uh, transmission gearbox. So let's do one second. It seems like I, I pick up the wrong video, it seems like. I, I picked up a, I think I picked up a wrong video. Let's see, transmission. There is more than uh, one class is used. Is it false or true? What do you think? Raihan, 137. You can hear me? Raihan? 137. Raihan, you out. You are not in the classroom. Roll 99, you here? Roll 99, you are not here. You out yes, from the classroom. Yes, sir. You here? Roll 99? Yes, sir. Here. What is your name? Sir, my name is Kulil, sir. Kulil, last time I call you, you don't respond. Okay, tell me. In manual transmission, we use more than one class. Is it true or false? Yes, sir. False or true? False, uh, sir. True, sir. True. How? Oh. Naipul, 92. Or Napiul, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tell me. That, uh, sir, please repeat the question, sir. In manual transmission, we use more than one class, multiple class we use. Is true or false? Hello, sir. Yeah, is true or false? Manual, there is a more than uh, one class, or there is a multiple class in manual transmission. Tell me, true or false? That's sir, false, sir. False. Yes, sir. It's true. We use the uh, main one class to transfer power from the flywheel to the input shaft of the transmission. But transmission itself, for synchronizing the gear, unlocking and unlocking, they do by, by the uh, fictional surface of the synchronizer. And simply, we showing the video that they're saying there is only simple friction surface. But some high yield car, they use class type material. Okay, what is the class? You transfer energy from one surface or one body to another body by uh, friction. So same thing over, over here. Okay, so it's true. Uh, anyway, let me uh, we can share the screen again. Did you see the video, uh, um, ABJ garage? Uh, there is a friction, they say friction surface between the outer surface and inner surface of this one. There is some frictional material. So this is like what like a class. Okay. That will cause this. That means output shaft has a spline. This is not the gear kind of, you know, slot. Also the hub, sliding hub, it also also matched with the speed. Then is rotate, then output shuffle to rotate. And you see the slot over here, this slot, this slot, they in line. When they in line, there is a key. So when you push the key, then this one start to rotate. Then shaft also have the rotational speed. So you see, this is the slip on the right hand side, also right over here, this slip. So then you have the synchronizer, then you have the half. So how many parts is there? Three parts. This is synchronizer, this is half, then this is the slip. 
okay then you have the key slot key and key has a uh, three slotting key and they are loaded with the spring some spring time a spring time mechanism so uh, what you see over here what i like to mention that as a mechanical engineer you are studying automobile engineering course so this course only uh, we are teaching you the fundamentals so at least you should know the what is gearbox how gear engage and disengage with the output uh, shaft and what is the mechanism so for example you are working might be some transport company homebound or uh, some uh, you know uh, what is the international uh, courier service in bangladesh there is any courier service in bangladesh international courier service the dhl okay so they use lot of vehicle right for uh, other example daras they use lot of uh, pickup all of them is manual transmission so if if you are working for them as a maintenance engineer so at least you need to know that how what is manual transmission look like how it is work okay uh, for example in bangladesh normally i am not sure they fix it normally they replace it if it or might be in the dolakhal area okay they might be uh, replace uh, the one person getting wired they remove the one gear from the other one but in uh, if you work in the western country uh, labor cost is extremely high they just replace the whole uh, gearbox i think bangladesh is same thing people normally replace their engine and transmission and buy the what is called reconditioned one and the put, put there but at least you need to know as a a maintenance if you like to work as a maintenance engineer even if you are using your own vehicle okay but still the transmission is extremely complex things but if you work for a company who design and fabricate the uh, gearbox for other for supplying for tata motor or supplying for mitsubishi or honda then you need to know in detail of design you need to apply the your knowledge of machine design how much heat will be generated what uh, type of lubricant you will use what will be the uh, gear ratio then how much uh, teeth will be put in gear how much torque will be transferred you need the detail analysis okay but uh, right now we are giving you just fundamental idea so whatever we learn from the video that will be i think enough so so far any any question no question anyone so uh, we will start the uh, next uh, you know next one is uh, automatic transmission system so let's see how it is work then we might see a video if we, we got the time okay so uh, next class is did you see the power point slide? Hello. Yes, sir. We can see. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, we will study automatic transmission. So, what happened the automatic transmission? In the manual transmission, we have a class, main class or fiction class. Then we have gearbox, right? But in automatic transmission, we just replace the uh, Plus, with some hydraulic equipment that is, is called torque converter. What is the function of the class? Anyone can explain? Function of the class. It transmits power, or I can say it transmits torque from your engine flywheel to the input of the shaft of the gearbox, right? between two he transfer the speed or torque so if we replace the that mechanism by something else that means by something by using some kind of fluid uh, that then it is called automatic transmission this whole thing is called automatic transmission because there is no class and we don't have to place the class pedal so instead of the class they use a torque converter it connected to the crankshaft and power train 
to the gear train. That means if transmit power from the uh, engine crankshaft or flywheel to the input shaft of the gearbox. So it has a three uh, uh, basic part. Number one, a torque converter. We'll discuss it later on what is torque converter. Then there will be some gearbox or it's called gear train. And gear train, you see in the manual transmission, all the gear are helical gear. But in the automatic transmission, normally they use uh, it is cyclic gear. Okay. Um, having three or four forward speed, but nowadays some vehicle coming with the seven speed, even eight speed. A simple EP cyclic gear train arranged as an external part of the torque converter. So what happens if this is your engine flywheel, then you will have the torque converter, then you will have the uh, automatic in from the gearbox. Okay. And there is some hydraulic mechanism or some electronic system to, for controlling purpose and engaging and disengaging. So which include some controlling system responsible for engaging, disengaging the various classes and the gear. Okay. So what type of question might be from here? What are the main component of automatic transmission system? Describe the function of each component briefly. So those, uh, this must will be enough. So let's see what we have in the next slide. There is some link of the video and uh, we, if we have time today, we'll watch the video otherwise. We will study the video in the next class. So, this is the a figure I uploaded, downloaded from the uh, like Google. You see, this is a this portion is a torque converter. That's a schematic view, and this is the gearbox, and this is your output shaft. So, what happened over here? There is no counter shaft in that case, right? No secondary shaft. The your you know, the torque converter, gearbox, and output shaft, everything aligned with the same center line. And this is better for uh, to, uh, transmit the power. But in uh, manual transmission, what do you see? You see there is three shaft, input shaft, then counter shaft, then output shaft, right? And there is a one more configuration right over here. You see this one is a torque converter. So how look like the torque converter? You see this part has a some is a kind of plate, and in that plate some has some impeller or bam, like have some blade in the. If you see the centrifugal pump, they have some band over here. So this one right also has some. Uh, man over here, and in between, you fill up with the some kind of fluid. So, I have a plate, and this plate has some you know, blade impeller like this type. And if this one is rotated, then fluid will you have the surrounding has a fluid, fluid have kinetic energy, you start to rotate. And this side you have one more plate, and it helps also has some vein or blade. So due to the rotational speed, fluid have kinetic energy, and he will also heat this blade. When he is heat this blade, then this one start to rotate. This is the main mechanism. But what they use the between these two plate, they use one more part that is called stator. And it also has some kind of uh, vein or impeller or blade, or might be some special type of hole. So what happened? When fluid is coming out, out of this vein with higher centrifugal speed or kinetic energy, then it's passed through one more vein. When you're passing through one more vein, this is stationary, this is not moving. Fluid energy is increased. Momentum is changes. Due to the changing of momentum, also it has more kinetic energy, then it hit the, this blade. So then it start to rotate. And this one is called stator. This is the 
then you did you have you put in a power okay this is the main thing this is called torque converter or sometimes it is called hydraulic coupling because you transfer the motion from one parts to another parts due to the kinetic energy of the uh, fluid and uh, <coughs> you see there is a, some brake band we'll discuss this later on on the automatic suspension system and they use the planetary gear set also okay and at the beginning of the i asked you that in the automobile transmission system we have only one class or more than uh, one class you see right over here uh, they are saying class pack why the class pack for engaging and disengaging the gear with the output shaft they use class mean they use some friction of the contact surface transmit power due to the friction that's why it is called class pack okay and later on we'll see that how many what type of class normally they use in the transmission system so let's see in the next slide uh, automatic transmission system and construction it's say in automatic transmission system uh, gear and shifting device are arranged in single row along a common center line so i'll just explain you uh, while ago and automatic trans axle have component either in single row or two row and offset torque converter offset torque converter mean in some cases your this is your flywheel then you write over here your torque converter or hydraulic coupling and you have a shaft output shaft over here now how will power transmit to the uh, gearbox you can do directly or you can, your gearbox might can have right over here and there might be input shaft of the gearbox over here and in between there might be a send drive in other class i think in the one picture i show you and actually question the why the send drive over here uh, so this is kind of offset there is some distance between the output shaft of the torque converter and input shaft of the gearbox so you might they might transfer power by a chain drive or we can use a gear okay both ways is possible so that's a saying they sometimes they use two row with an offset torque converter offset means there is some distance between the output shaft of the uh, gear and the input shaft of the i'm sorry uh, output shaft of the torque converter and input shaft of the transmission torque converter drive transmission input shaft through sprocket and connected by chain drive something like you know bicycle you have sprocket and you have chain automatic trans axle drive front wheel through cb joint and half shaft so there is a some cb joint and half shaft constant uh, wheel uh, <coughs> speed joint we will discuss this later on there is a different type of joint used in the drive shaft that's we'll discuss later on okay so let's see the next video uh, right over here uh, this one is manual transmission Okay, this is gear shifting lever and all the drive shaft shaft of the output shaft of the gearbox and the drive shaft they're in line and this one is a differential gear okay and you see this one is called axle left axle this one is called right axle so right over here you see this is engine this is the flywheel or class or it might be torque converter and they're transmitting this is your transmission and between from the your manual gearbox to the differential gear they are transmitting receiving power by kind of the gear and all those things you see this portion in a powered by single case that means in a single assembly 
<coughs> and right in the right side figure, bottom right side figure, you see this is, is called trans axel. Trans axel means transmission axel. Transmission then from the your gearbox or manual transmission or is going to the differential gear, then is going sometime it is called half shaft axel shaft. This one. Like this one is axel. You see, uh, though in the schematic diagram is showing it seems like one part, but it's not one part. Right over here is seems like the two part over here. Okay. So this is called half shaft or axel shaft. Same figure over here. So what is torque converter? Uh, let's study the torque converter. It's saying it is it it displaces the mechanical class in a vehicle in a automatic transmission, allowing load to be separated from the power source. It allow to engage de-engage the engine from the transmission. It is usually located between the engine flex plate, that means flywheel, and the transmission. Torque converter is generally type of fluid coupling system, you know, to use to transfer the energy from one part to another part. Torque converter is a special type of fluid coupling device. It has a curved vein that reduces bounce back effect. That means it should not make any bounce back. That's why. Uh, they use the carb pen. <clears throat> what does it mean bounce back? That means you have a left side, this is left side plate, and there is a some vein over here. Okay. Bounce back means fluid, fluid leaving the cup surface, going right over here, straight road. In going through the straight road, but it should not bounce back like make any vortex in the to hit it again. Should not be like that. That is say reduce the bounce back effect. When your vehicle is uh, moving in transmission gear is engaged from start position, then it will be your vehicle with the first gear automatically. You don't have to. So what is mean the uh, first gear slow speed, but your torque will be high because your more energy is need to initiate the motion. So you'll get lower speed, but torque will be high. And transmission shift automatically into higher gear as you accelerate the your accelerator path by your feet. Gradually, it will move in the high, uh, high speed gear. Even you are driving an automatic transmission vehicle, but you accelerating, Sometimes you might realize that there is a uh, shifting of the gear. You'll get a little bit shake. Okay. When deaccelerating, transmission de-engages the torque converter. And then it automatically is move the gear from high gear to the low gear. This is the function of torque converter. So uh, what type of question might be from here? What is the function of, uh, one second, let me pull up some. What is the function of torque converter? Where it is located in the automobile or where it is used in the automobile? Describe the working principle of the torque converter in automobile, okay? So right over here you see this is a DIX and it has a some vein or blade on it. And this is called stator. Stator is not moving. Okay. Uh, and this is the impeller. That means you transmit the power from this plate to the fluid. This is impeller. Between the plate, you have a fluid over here. And that fluid then is going moving through the stator. Then it changes the momentum. It get, might be at kinetic energy. Then it heat the blade of this plate or vein. Then this is going to start to rotate. This is the main mechanism. Okay. And right over here, uh, it's showing 
is how it is look like. So left side figure, this one has a some blade. You see some vein over here. Then fluid leaving the vein, then passing through the stator. This is the stator. And this one has the similar of that vein. Then this one start to rotate. If you look in the bottom left uh, figure, you see this is the engine flywheel. Then this is normally they call this is turbine. That means this is receiving power from the flywheel. Flywheel is rotating, this vein is rotating. So inside the fluid also start to rotate, gain the kinetic energy. Then the fluid pass through the stator, installed right over here. Right over here is showing right over here is a stator. Then in leaving the stator, then heat the impeller or they, sometimes it's, they call this turbine. Okay. Then this one starts to rotate. And then this output from the torque converter is going to the input shaft of the gearbox. <clears throat> Same thing sh showing over here. Uh, they call it, this one call it turbine. This is inside, they have a stator right over here. And this is a torque converter housing, or you can say power. And sometime right over here, and they call it pump, right over here. They call it pump, this one call it turbine. And transmission input shaft, the output shaft of the torque converter, right over here you have the transmission. So the fundamental uh, principle the how it is work is showing over here. Construction of torque converter. So how it is uh, look like, let's see. There is a, it's called driving chamber in the torque converter is the impeller or pump. And the driven member is the turbine. So left side one is the turbine and right side one close to the input shaft of the transmission is called impeller or is called pump right over here. This is turbine, this one is called pump or impeller. This left side figure, they designate as the impeller, but right side figure, some book mention it as the pump. The impeller rotate uh, at engine speed and turbine is connected to the transmission input shaft. Third member is stator. It is placed between inner end of the impeller and turbine vane. So what it does, it has a curved vane, which sends the direction of the flow. So sends the direction of the flow, that means sense of momentum. If sense of momentum, that means fluid has more, gain some energy. So it helps to multiplication of torque in certain conditions. So in the certain uh, vehicle, it multiplies the torque. That means it distributes um, it multiplies the torque, then what will be happen the uh, speed? If torque increase, speed will be reduced or decrease. Anyone? Uh, ID one on three, Yamin. Yeah, I mean. Yamin, yeah, I mean you are here? Yamin, yeah, I mean. you are not here. You, are, you, are not get, you will not get attendance. 138, Mohammed, Mohammed Shopiul or Shifat, sh Shifat, sir. Shifat, okay. Yes, sir. You here, 138, right? Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> so tell me, when you transmitting higher torque, then speed will be high or low? The low. Good, speed will be low because uh, when at the higher speed, T equal to torque equal to a P, if I say power equal to T torque into omega. Omega means rotational speed. So if torque increase, then this one has to decrease. So at yes, the high speed, you get low uh, torque. At the low speed, you get the higher torque. So that's why that means the stator work as a multiplication of torque. It is mounted on one way class. It can only rotate in forward direction. So it is said, though it is called stator, but it is mounted a one way class. You see, 
and the class term is coming again over here. Okay, so whatever the slide we are showing, that's a schematic diagram, not the real one. Real one is more complex. They have some uh, class also there. Class mean they use some fictional surface to for locking or unlocking or engage and disengaging. That is uh, must remember. Okay, so it's saying it is mounted on one way class can only rotate in forward direction. So what is the function of the stator? Function of the stator? Sadia, roll 97. You there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What is the function of stator? What is does? Where it is installed between the in the fuel tank or in the in the radiator of the car. You're in the class. I have network issues, sir. Okay, class was set to move the Oh, I don't believe it. I don't believe it that your network problem. I can hear you clearly. Okay, you fail in today's today's class. Okay, you see. What is the stator? You have turbine or on plate. There is a some blade. You have one more over here. It has a some blade or band. If this one rotate, inside the fluid also rotate. Yes, the sir. The fluid yes, sir. hit the blade on the right side one, and right side is start to rotate. But they use a intermediate one parts that is called stator. It has also some vein or some hole. You can say when fluid is rotating then the fluid has to pass through the whole of this surface then it gets in the momentum then it heat over here okay yes sir and it it, it, it also yeah. sir increases the efficiency of the sir, torque converter torque good that means it it helps to increase the torque whenever you need it at yes. the lower speed you need the higher speed so that's why this is the main function of the stator okay so we might have question from ask you question that what is the function of stator in torque converter where it is located okay okay working procedure of torque converter it's in coupling occur when turbine is running fast as the pump Torque multiplication occur because of action of fluid flow and special vein in the stator. That means he reduced the speed a little bit, right? And due to the changing the momentum of the fluid. So uh, that means it will rotate slowly, the right side vein. So rotate slowly, that means it able to transmit higher torque. That, that is saying over here. That's why it is said torque multiplication. Torque multiplication is needed for acceleration and occur only when impeller run faster than the turbine. Some torque converter has dual stator, provide greater torque multiplication, say some uh, off-road uh, off vehicle or utility vehicle. Uh, even if you see the all the tank, how they move. They use any IC engine inside? The tank using in the in the wire or any wire? What do you think? They also use IC engine, like automotive engine, right? They also have a tar, uh, transmission system. Obviously, and, sir. Yeah. Or else it won't run, sir. Yeah, and they are extremely heavyweight. And they can go run over the any train, right? You have hilly area or downhill, whatever the road condition or the, in the terrain, they can go anywhere. So in that case, those vehicles might use the uh, multiple stator. That is saying dual stator. Normally, impeller run faster than the turbine. Then what will happen? Say for impeller, this is turbine. That means uh, this one receiving power from the flywheel okay and the right side one you have a right side one right over here this one is 
uh, is called palm bar impeller. This, if this one running faster, then he will receive higher torque or low torque. Say right side one is rotational speed R1. And this one is say R0. Rotational speed, that means omega. If R1 greater than R0, then R1 you will get higher torque or lower torque. So lower torque, sir. Lower torque, right? Yes, sir. That means if it's run faster than this one, then he'll get lower torque. That means there will be some slippage of torque. It says normally impeller run faster than the turbine. The difference of speed or torque is called slippage. Right over here, they saying they are calling is speed difference in speed. Actually, it will be difference of torque. Then it's called slippage. So they use some mechanism to reduce the slippage of torque. Same figure, and we'll uh, we'll see the some video. Then it will be more clear. So we will uh, study only this slide. Then we'll go back to the. Uh, video. We have only five minutes, right? Yes, sir. We have, we have four minutes. Yes, sir. Five minutes. Five minutes. We have okay. Let me finish this slide, then we'll be attendance. So right over here is torque converter class. You see, class is always running behind us in the automatic system. It's a normally impeller run faster than the turbine. The difference of speed is known as slippage. It causes power loss through torque converter. That means there is some power loss is getting over here. So a torque converter class is sometimes used to log the torque converter mechanically to prevent the slippage. So there is some mechanism used to reduce the uh, slippage of torque. As a result, it improved fuel economy and lowered the temperature of the transmission fluid. Most vehicle torque converter class is controlled by electronic control module. So just remember that you are this delivering power from one end to other end, right? Even you get higher speed, but you might get the less torque. That means Torque is related to the power. That's why it's saying there is some slip is happening and it's normal because there is nothing 100% efficiency. But what you can do, you can reduce it in certain level. So that's why they use torque converter class and it is controlled by electronic control module. So what is TCC? Uh, where it is used, describe the function of TCC. A hot method is used to prevent slippage in the torque converter. What method? By using torque converter class, which is controlled by electronic control mode. And how it is helped in the automobile? It improves the fuel efficiency, efficiency also reduce the temperature of the transmission fluid. So we will leave it over here. Let me give you the attendance. And today we are not watching any video. Same thing happened to the section A. So next class, uh, we will remind me, we will see the video of torque converter and all we will see the video of uh, automatic transmission system. So let